Uh, hello, YouTubers. I'm about to do something that um, most people that are into these watches and even if they have one have not done before. Hard to believe because this, this one has as much of a following, I would say, as the Monster. And um, I would say even a little more so because of the um, just when you check up on eBay, you'll see that there's always parts available for this watch. And of course, we're talking about what, I, when I, what I'm going to do now that people haven't done is just do a review on the Arnie. You would think that someone or at least more people would have done them. Uh, there's tons of them out there on, on YouTube for the Monster, which I've had two already. And I can say it's just uh, just awesome overall on the thought, that the, the amount of thought that they put in for that watch um, and how it came out. In other words, everything just seemed work all together very well. Uh, in terms of like the amount of loom material used for the markers and stuff like that. Uh, but the topic at hand today is a watch that has a shroud around it that the very, very high-end Seikos have also in design. And the one and only we're talking about here is the Seiko H558 or the Arnie um, analog digital 150 meter divers watch. Uh, I'm going to cut straight to one of the cool design points of the watch, which is uh, this is something um, specific to Seiko, and, and that's just a shroud. You see how it goes there. Um, you know, it cut, protects the, the left side of it, and then it'll go over to the right and protect that side. But then it keeps the top and the bottom open so that you can turn the bezel when you need to. Um, this application goes a lot for commercial divers uh, when there are, or even a regular diver maybe that's just out down below and just bangs it out around on, off of something and just protect the, the overall uh, case better. Um, so, um, if you do your homework, you'll see also that the, this was the first, um, dive watch to have a digital component, uh, put into it. Um, whether or not the, the, the so there's a couple of versions the, this one, the more expensive one has the LCD on top. Um, you, there's some that have the LCD on the bottom, but the ones on top get more value for it. Um, this watch has been up, uh, with expedition teams to Mount Everest. And, and if I remember correctly, maybe even some of the poles, but um, it's definitely the module inside has been designed for uh, that kind of temperature fluctuation. I like keeping, I just got this and I, I like keeping it all, you know, as much original as possible as you, you can see the, the dial already. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the crystal could definitely be using um, uh, some buffing or, or, or uh, a replacement as well as the, the bezel. But I just like, you know, just <laughs> the way they set it in the, in the listing, you know, Arnold uh, went through some movies and he, he got scratches, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's the same thing here. So, yeah, uh, if you don't, if you haven't read and, and know, uh, this watch was used by Arnold Schwarzenegger in five movies, including Commando and Alien. I mean, I'm sorry, Commando and Predator. So, um, and he kept on using it and you can see pictures of him with his family and stuff. Uh, he just loved the watch. And you can also see James Cameron even with with uh, the Mr. Billionaire himself with um, with the watch, um, you know, like a black and white photo. Um, since then, uh, Arnold has moved on. I've seen him uh, with the Audemars Piaget or whatever watch. And then uh, James Cameron uh, with Rolex. He actually took that watch, uh, the Deep Sea Challenger. They made a special version of that watch um, to take all the way down. Uh, when he was just uh, in there, down there last year in the Pacific, uh, the watch looked ridiculous. Had a really thick case on it, but they they strapped it to the one of the robotic arms of the of the sub that he had gone down with. So anyway, um, just to talk real quick about some of the the features of this watch, um, some of the functions rather. Um, it does have a, a, a multi-directional bezel, and it turns really good um, in the sense that you don't have to. Uh, you know, um, push real hard to go uh, either way. Um, one cool design detail of this watch is how they split up the second hand. In other words, the back end in black. Um, just gives it all well a more thought out design. You know, it looks a lot better uh, on the face to have the part that counts. In other words, the white side um, counting the seconds in white and then hide the rest if you really don't need to see it. Um, okay, so let's go through some of the functions real quick. Um, this is in, um, I mean, I'm, what, I, what I mean to say is that the top mode right, right now is in uh, regular timekeeping mode. So uh, it has alarm also. And I think I skipped a step by having it showing first the time. I think the first one is date, but we'll get to that. 
Uh, the alarm you can set. I have a file that has all the movement settings that uh, I can send if you if y'all if you get an Arnie or you're interested. Uh, this is out on the forums, but I can forward a copy to. I can shoot you. It's no problem. Um, so as, as far as sending the alarm out, it's pretty cool. I've, I've used some G-Shocks before, and I, this is the first time I'd seen this kind of setup. You actually have to uh, pop out the crown on the right and then um, turn the crown. I, you know, I guess I don't have as much experience in some of these as other people do. I don't, I've never seen Casio with this, really. Uh, they might have some. But you have to turn the crown to actually uh, move forward or back on the time. And then the faster you turn on the crown, the faster, like you can actually like almost skip seconds. It just goes a lot fa uh, faster. It's like it's like pressing the far button on a CD player when you used to have to um, um, skip tracks that way. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So okay, we also have oh, and the alarm sounds awesome too. So I'm gonna actually do a test of that real quick. Let's let's see here. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sucker for this stuff. So yeah, I definitely, um, I like features like that. Okay. So that's the, the date. Some people I've noticed, they do prefer having it in this mode, but, um, for whatever reason, I can always go back to that if I need to, to know what day and the date it is. I prefer having, um, the watch synced as you can see right now, how the seconds are counting through. And, um, I, it's just so cool that even after a couple of days and let's see how long, It'll still um, be tracking okay. In other words, the man, the analog and digital will still be, um, you know, uh, being timed perfectly. Uh, it takes a, maybe a little practice to get it done. Also with the with the minutes, but um, it is it is sync right now. Uh, okay, so we already talked about that. Um, uh, the alarm, um, and then so you also have local time. In other words, even though it says local, they really mean dual time. So you can have. I have my brother living in Dubai. I have that. Uh, set just to know what what time it is over there um, the stopwatch will go up for an hour and then once it reaches 60 minutes it'll just go ahead and and start over again uh, very cool the basic nature of this watch though um, and that's it uh, so yeah this is very popular military also I've noticed um, uh, on eBay I've saved a lot of listings and uh, the price varies wow it'll go all the way from like 300 so they sell for like a thousand to uh, I can't wait. I just got an orange also. Uh, I snagged that one um, for like 98 bucks, and I already bought the shroud for it, and I have the, the band coming from it also. There's a, a similar band that's come out from the original that you can find uh, on eBay by William Jean. W. Jean, if you're into Seiko, you know this guy uh, with all the bands that he sells on eBay. But I was able on uh, watchrecon.com, a uh, seller from Watch You Seek website had uh, the also the same band that WG was selling, but with a metal buckle. So I can't wait to get that. Uh, I'm going to keep the band on this guy right here. It's not the original, but it kind of mimics the, the straight there because it's not too long. In other words, the Z22 or whatever the model that I, number that I have, it's kind of like Z22 flat vent. Um, it's going to be, I know it's going to wind up being too long. And what I have to do at the end is uh, just kind of. Um, let let the thing loose a little bit so it doesn't pop out too much um, when it sticks out from the from from the buckle here. Um, so yeah, on the back, um, you have the the classic uh, tsunami that Seiko has become famous for. Um, you know, when I think of myself, I, I want to say that like Seiko is probably like the world's largest dive watch company. It's pretty cool when you start thinking about it. And they were saying how like you know you read the history of this watch on forums. There's one. One gentleman that's put um, a lot of, 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 uh, of attention to to the whole subject. The one the the post that he has that has all the the Arnold screenshots, um, and he's he was saying how this watch and um, yeah, may, uh, this one specifically put kind of Seiko um, front and center with attention. Um, this this movement also is in, uh, from what I hear in a uh, James Bond movie. Um, so oh the other thing the H five five six or the other Arnie that has the the display on the bottom it's it's kind of funny they don't consider it to be kind of the, like the legit arnie so when you see the back of that case it has the the two wave or the two crest logo in other words is that one that pulsar uses also pulsar being part of seiko of course it's kind of like the cheaper version or whatever and it's funny because i think you get all the functionality too but they wanted to differentiate it so that's how they did it um and and when you start start looking at it you have the amw watch also by casio 
Um, that's the, the other one that Arnold used to wear. Um, I'm going to get that one eventually, AMW 320C, I believe. Um, not the AMW 320R. Uh, that one, um, the buttons, uh, has the two on the left and the crown on the right, just like this. But uh, on the AMW uh, 320C, it has one, one pusher on the right also. Um, you can get those on eBay also. And that one actually, what's cool about that watch is, I know I'm kind of rambling on over here, but it's just, I, I like these analog digital divers. That one does not have the wave at all because it's made in, uh, in Japan. Um, and it just says Japan on the back, like the good old um, old school G-Shocks. Whereas um, the new AMW 320 watches has the, um, the, the kind of Pulsar, they kind of copy Seiko um, and they have like their own wave logo going there. All right, so, oh, yeah, the other cool thing, um, this watch, uh, the top button is, is the light, and and uh, the light actually comes um, from right in the middle there. Uh, so it actually is better, I would say, even than some of the G-Shock, the old 5600s. Uh, the old 5600s just have the light coming in from one side, and uh, it made it kind of hard sometimes to, to read the time. And, um, so, uh, yeah, overall, um, I'm very happy with this watch. Um, I hope this has helped in... Uh, and deciding whether or not this is the right watch for you, it pretty much is like the perfect uh, watch for me because I've I've gone through the SKX 007s of the world, and I have um, uh, 6309 a cushion case or the turtle slash UFO coming. I got it. I'm getting it fixed, and I'm still gonna have one of those just because it's so classic. But when it comes to ac time accuracy, um, the, these at the end are, are are my favorites. All right, y'all take care.